The New Orleans Secular Humanist Association welcomes everyone who's interested in exploring ideas from the humanist, non-religious perspective. For me, secular humanism is a philosophy for living and learning. Secular humanists use science and reason to understand the universe and solve human problems. As a non-religious person, I cannot accept supernatural answers to life's questions. Secular humanists confine their search for the truth to the natural world. Some of my highest goals in life are expressed in human secularism. To enjoy life in the here and now, and to strive for moral excellence. We believe in striving for the best and noblest that is possible in human beings. These viewpoints reflect our philosophy, which applies to all aspects of our lives. Each of our programs will try to apply reason to various interesting topics and show how this approach differs from the dogma of non-humanist thinking. Welcome again to our show. I'm Harry Greenberger. I'm president of the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association and the host for this show. We think you're going to find our topic today very interesting. We have as our very special uh, guest, Jim Vanderweel, who is minister of Community Church Unitarian Universalist. And on the panel, we have members of our organization. We have Michael Malik and Dennis Dwyer, and I welcome all of you to our program. When we invited uh, Reverend Van Der Weel to be on the show, we gave him the option of selecting the topics that we might discuss, and he would he chose to talk about uh, the um, Humanist Manifesto. Uh, Jim, tell us how you selected that topic. I have uh, been interested in this document, uh, which was originally published in 1933. The interesting element to me is that it has uh, in its uh, formation a number of Unitarian Universalist uh, ministers who looked at the nature of life on this planet and decided that it was important first and foremost to emphasize our humanity as part of our, as an integral part, the central part of our religious character, and out of this grew the Humanist Manifesto. Very good. Um, you want to get into some of the details of that manifesto that you found particularly appealing? Well, um, sure. Um, the uh, integral part about uh, it at the beginning is that religious humanists regard the universe as self-existing and not created. Humanism believes that uh, humans are part of nature and have emerged as a result of a continuous process. And uh, point number three, holding an organic view of life, humanists find that the traditional dualism of mind and body must be rejected. Now, can I interpret what you just said to mean that the Humanist Manifesto were supporters of natural evolution as opposed to intelligent creationism? Yes, very much so. Uh, and uh, this was endorsed at that time in 1933, and I guess the important point that I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to talk about a couple of the people who were leaders in the formation of this document uh, as well. But the important point is, is that in a, the United States of America, we have a long history of people who are free thinkers. And, and who are some of the people involved with this manifesto that you might want to tell us about? Well, it just kind of uh, happened that early in the 1900s, uh, three people, uh, three ministers, uh, one was John H. Dietrich, 
who served in Minneapolis primarily, uh, Curtis W. Reese, who was in Des Moines, Iowa for a time, and Charles Francis Potter. Uh, by different avenues moved from a fundamentalist viewpoint with which they were raised into an understanding of nature and the importance of human interrelating to each other as people who are connected here on this planet. And they developed a religious humanism as, as the central part of their statement that led to a humanist manifesto. What is religious humanism? R- religious humanism, uh, I believe that religion is what is central to our lives, that uh, we have a world and life view that we begin to incorporate and out of which we work. And um, as that develops into an attitude and uh, an approach to life, uh, this becomes a religion as it becomes formalized. And uh, the Humanist Manifesto um, is not really an expression of a joining together and becoming a, a church or a religious institution of any uh, sort, but it is a statement for those people who would follow this as their religious ideal. Is the uh, and of course this manifesto, which was written in 1933, was it, uh, uh, has been revised. This there was a humanist manifesto number two and another one number three, but uh, in general, the the principles that are outlined in the manifesto. Uh, how does that? And you say some some of the the people involved in writing this were with Unitarian churches. Is this generally accepted either in the original or revised forms by most of the Unitarian churches? Most yes, I, I believe so. Although we have a great diversity in, in uh, our congregations, we're free thinkers. Uh, we certainly value the human reason as something that's very important to us in uh, what we are able to project to others. And uh, the ability to look at our humanity is an underwriting precept that guides us all, although some uh, you know, use this in conjunction with several other faith systems that are personally important to them. There are people in your congregation who are also members of our of our group. Yes, and so would uh, I don't know how they define themselves, but how do you differentiate between religious humanism and secular humanism? Um, well, that's a fairly complicated question. Uh, we didn't say this was right. easy. <laughs> um, I guess the point that I would would make here is that uh, secular humanists are very closely related to religious humanists, and that we have a tradition of this religious humanism, you know, in our country. Um, I think that uh, secular humanism is. Uh, um, exp- has been expressed in literature, has been expressed in uh, uh, a philosophy of life, and uh, is certainly finds expression in science and uh, the work of scientists. And all of those things become incorporated into, for example, the Humanist Manifesto has a statement also about the importance of science and, and, uh, and how that can lead us and direct us as we grow and become more efficient operators here on this planet. Um, but uh, uh, we're uh, at a position, I think, in humanism now relating it to our faith that uh, it's a component you know it's a component in what we believe Uh, you know and uh, rather than that is totally all that we have 